Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Cruise video. Today I'm detailing what you need to know before sailing on the Carnival Conquest, which is sailing out of Miami and is definitely a party ship. While she has been sailing since the year 1998, she's quite popular amongst the weekend cruisers sailing down to the Bahamas. So let's get started before we do. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, leave us a comment, and feel free to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. The Carnival Conquest was the first launched in the Conquest class of ships for Carnival. The ship still retains its original theme, which is decidedly French Impressionist, with venues named after Van Gogh, Toulouse Lautrec, Monet, you name it. It's very quirky, and I didn't know how I was going to feel about it before stepping on board, but I decided on board it was a lot of fun. Uh, they don't really make ships like this anymore, like that's definitely for sure. It seems like the newer ships are all kind of the same sort of sterile vibe. This ship has a lot of fun. If you are sailing on her, you'll be sailing out of the Port of Miami most likely. For my sailing, I flew the same day from Orlando. You can see that video link in the description below. But there are plenty of pre-cruise options in Miami. You can opt to stay on the beach in South Beach, which is definitely a fun place to stay for first timers to Miami. But for me, I like to check out what's happening in Brickell, which is some of the most expensive real estate in the city nowadays. If you want ultra luxurious, you can opt for a stay on Ball Harbor, which is where I used points after my cruise at the St. Regis Ball Harbor. It's part of the Marriott program. Full review on the channel as well. I had a check-in time of 10.30 a.m. at Terminal F, which is Carnival's newly opened terminal for their newer ships. I loved the look inside the terminal, though I think Royal Caribbean's newer terminal in Miami looked better aesthetically. I had forgotten to print my boarding pass for Carnival, which they printed for me outside the terminal very quickly. Uh, my check-in time was around 10.30 a.m., but I was arriving around 11.30 a.m. Uh, the first check-in of documents went really quickly, which I then headed upstairs for security check. The drug dogs were out in full force, and everyone had to give the dog a sniff of all of their bags. After going through metal detectors and another look at my boarding pass, I was on board. So overall, pretty easy, um, but the drug dog was definitely a new addition to my Carnival Cruise experience. To facilitate a fun and easy cruise, I recommend downloading the Carnival Hub app before your cruise. It'll allow you to make reservations for things on board and import early and possibly save in the process. You will also be able to check in uh, for your cruise before you arrive in the Port of Miami to make your embarkation day a little bit easier. Once on board, you'll be able to chat with other guests for a $5 fee on the app. You can see what's happening activity-wise. You can see deck plans, order food and drinks, and manage your onboard spending. You don't need the internet plan to use the app, and I found it to work pretty well and responsive once on board, but sometimes it was really glitchy while at home. In terms of luggage, make sure that you're bringing any cruise-approved electronics on board. Surge-protected power bars are a big no-no. Anything that heats up like irons, clothes, steamers, heating pads, and humidifiers as well. The Carnival Conquest has laundry facilities with ironing boards and irons, by the way. And if you have bigger luggage, you can drop that with the porters. Make sure to tip them. And that will appear at your room sometime on the first day of your cruise. Staterooms are ready typically around 1.30 in the afternoon on board Carnival ships. The ship doesn't allow you to bring on your own hard liquor or beer, but you can bring on board one 750 milliliter wine bottle or champagne bottle on embarkation day per cabin for completely free. Once on board, I like to make any restaurant reservations that I haven't already made, and then check out some of the specials going on on board in the bars and restaurants. The big question I'm often asked is if the beverage package is worth it. While I think that some big drinkers, it makes sense if you're crafty with hitting the happy hours on board, however, I found that it's quite a savings over the drinks package. If you get the drinks package, just remember that Carnival actually limits you to 15 drinks per day between 6 a.m. and 6 a.m. And just so you know, if you do run out of alcoholic drinks on that package, it's not possible for you to buy more. Non-alcoholic drinks, though, are excluded, so you can get all of your coffees and waters, etc., continuing if you do hit that 15 drink limit. There are a lot of fun activities on board. Carnival's Sailway Celebration was really fun, and I loved that Shaq made an appearance. While this was a short sailing, they did pack a lot of entertainment on the ship for such a short cruise. I am a big fan of trivia, and they had a lot of fun trivia like Name That Tune in addition to traditional trivia. I loved the Steakhouse, the specialty restaurant on board. It was a nice change of pace for my frequent cruises on Royal Caribbean, where I'm pretty used to the menus there. The main dining room's food was also pretty spectacular. I do recommend the short rib if you do see that on the menu. Carnival has partnered with Emerald Lagasse recently to amp up their food, and it definitely shows. I was really impressed with the food on board. 
You'll be sailing to the Bahamas most likely if you're on the Conquest, so I do recommend booking a shore excursion if you've never been. Atlantis was my pick for this cruise since I did have a large amount of onboard credit to spend in two days. It's a pricey day. It's $219 per person, but it includes transportation to Paradise Island. Uh, Atlantis is a fantastic water park, definitely my favorite water park option on the island. It just offers a really high-end experience, I think, for what you're paying for. It is about as expensive as a day at Disneyland, though. Other options near the port that are a little bit cheaper that you could think about is Margaritaville Day Pass, which has a small but nice water park on the beach. You can book it through the website Resort Pass for about $100 a person. And there are plenty of other excursions offered through the ship as well, including booze cruises, snorkeling, island visits, etc. For cabin selection, I recommend getting a higher floor as I was on deck one and that required a lot of walking upstairs or waits for elevators during my cruise. It didn't bother me too much, but just keep that in mind. I do recommend an ocean view or a balcony cabin if the price is right on the ship or if you're a first time cruiser for the Great Bahamas views. I had an inside cabin as a solo cruiser and it worked perfectly for my purposes, but may not fit your family if you have never sailed an inside cabin before. Well, those are my tips for sailing on the Carnival Conquest. What tips do y'all have? Let us know in the comments. Happy sailing.